country that builds underground nuclear facilities, that develops intercontinental ballistic missiles, that manufactures thousands of centrifuges, and that absorbs crippling sanctions, is doing all that in order to advance medical science. And it's time the world started calling a duck a duck. It's been very clear to me over the years that if you're an expert on 9-11, an expert on banking scams and all this stuff, you're still walking around the outer rim of the rabbit hole. You've not even entered it yet. Um, and to get deep in the rabbit hole, a number of things are necessary. First of all, you have to be free from pre preconceived idea. Because if you have a preconceived religious belief or political belief or scientific belief, then you're going to go so far and you're going to go any further. Because once you get slightly into the rabbit hole, all those things start to fall apart. So thus, if you want to keep them, don't go any deeper. And lots of people do that. Um, they won't go deeper because of um, the effect on their belief system. And there's another part of this, which is that people who can open their minds to these deeper, more, if you like, on the face of it, but not really bizarre concepts, um, they might open their minds to think, hey, this makes sense, this, I look, this looks like this is what's going on. But then they have the barrier of the fear of what other people think yeah. to get through. Um, and thus they'll um, suppress what they put out because they're thinking, well, it's so far out, what will people think? People will laugh at me. You know, I couldn't give, I couldn't give a damn if people laugh at me. It's no interest in me. Some time ago, the wire services and newspapers carried a story out of San Francisco describing the first satanic wedding ceremony ever performed. The pictures showed a nude woman lying on the altar behind the guest.
Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Rio Declaration on the Environment and Development. Agenda 21 defines itself as the comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally. The red are areas that are to be off limits to human beings. If you live there, you won't. The black areas, the black dots, are the smart growth zones. That's where human beings are to be stacked and packed and children cared for. of terror and make no mistake about it if they do not act America will Our second goal is to prevent regimes that sponsor terror from threatening America or our friends and allies with weapons of mass destruction. Some of these regimes have been pretty quiet since September the 11th, but we know their true nature. North Korea is a regime arming with missiles and weapons of mass destruction while starving its citizens. Iran aggressively pursues these weapons and exports terror, while an unelected few repress the Iranian people's hope for freedom. Iraq continues to flaunt its hostility toward America and to support terror. The Iraqi regime has plotted to develop anthrax and nerve gas and nuclear weapons for over a decade. This is a regime that has already used poison gas to murder thousands of its own citizens, leaving the bodies of mothers huddled over their dead children. This is a regime that agreed to international inspections, then kicked out the inspectors. This is a regime that has something to hide from the civilized world. And for your cooperation in the past, when complete secrecy was vital, we are grateful. However, I must make something clear. Although ours is not strictly a military project, a great deal of our research and knowledge falls within security regulations. Therefore, I must insist that you reveal only such information as appears in the authorized press release, which will be handed to you later. Central control will come from London. We have given you everything. From the houses you live in, to the cars you drive. We have further advanced the human civilization. From medicine, to space exploration, to furthering the life expectancy of all human beings. Without us, none of this would be possible. So you see, there is nothing to be scared about. As we want to bring about a new world order. A world order which will bring all humans together. A system where we can share all of the planet's natural resources instead of going to war with nations in order to gain their natural resources. To further advance ourselves we need to realize this. Further advancement of our species cannot be achieved if we do not do this. Without us, you would not have your televisions, your creature comforts, and your computers.
faithfully the president, office of president of the, the United States. The office of president of the United States faithfully. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. Congratulations, Mr. President. Recall that earlier generations faced down fascism and communism, not just with missiles and tanks, but with the sturdy alliances and enduring convictions. They understood that our power alone cannot protect us. Nor does it entitle us to do as we please. Instead, they knew that our power grows through its prudent use. Our security emanates from the justness of our cause, the force of our example, the tempering qualities of humility and restraint. We are the keepers of this legacy. Guided by these principles once more, we can meet those new threats that demand even greater effort even greater cooperation and understanding between nations. We will begin to responsibly leave Iraq to its people and forge a hard-earned peace in Afghanistan. With old friends and former foes, we will work tirelessly to lessen the nuclear threat and roll back the specter of a warming planet. To those, to those who cling to power through corruption and deceit and the silencing of dissent, Know that you are on the wrong side of history, but that we will extend a hand if you are willing to unclench your fist. That we did not turn back, nor did we falter. And with eyes fixed on the horizon and God's grace upon us, we carried forth that great gift of freedom and delivered it safely to future generations. who has inspired the movement would be a strength for them. But let me, let me clarify this very definitely. It is not an authoritarian organization, and the only reason why it's trying desperately to keep itself in some sort of very firm order and so on is because they're trying to correct things. But surely it's authoritarian in its treatment of suppressive people, that kind of thing. I mean, you don't allow criticism. Oh no, a suppressive person isn't critical. A suppressive person is a person who denies the right of others. But surely you are doing precisely that thing to them by denying them the right to do what they want to do. Perhaps, but if somebody is going to kill a baby, I think you would deny him the right to. This is beside I mean, the point. You know, the only thing, the only reason why any discipline has had to enter the scene, and the government should be very glad of that discipline, is to keep the lunatic fringe from other people from exploiting this subject and victimizing people with it. If the government were to knock out the control point of Scientology, they would leap the world. Why do they just fight it and say there's something bad? But they never specify what's bad. Where well, the money for all this comes from. Yes, yes. One of the things... It doesn't come from the Scientologists at St. Hill. No, the Scientologists at St. Hill. As a matter of fact, I wish I had the bill here to show you. But we added up over the years what monies I have loaned organizations and what monies of mine personally, loyalties and so on, have been collected by Scientology organizations and the amount of money paid out for research. And it amounts to $13 million. That's a fantastic sum of money.
first of all, we have uh, 25 broadcast clouds currently in China, uh, and we are the number one provider of broadcast weather graphic solutions in the country. I mean, you had this downpour, I believe, in the last 24 hours, which has caused even people losing their lives and uh, situations like this. With the detail that we can put up through the technology that we give to the various weather stations, uh, this makes people more aware of it. On the whole, it's a question of giving the opportunity. I mean, we have also launched uh, our, our, an operation called My Weather, uh, which gains access to the first truly personalized weather application for the web and mobile devices. You can go up on myweather.com and you can find out within a kilometer of where you are uh, what is going to happen to the weather. It also gives a 10-day forecast. I think we've got to be aware that we're living in a time, I, I'm not going to get into the subject which is a huge subject of climate change, but uh, we do have variations of all sorts around the world. Certainly in England we have a very precarious weather, we've had a drought up until about 10 days ago, um, and I think it is important to realize that you can use technology. We should move towards an international currency because uh, the speculation and the complexity of currency has caused some of the irritation, uh, not only among the trading nations, but among individuals. Um, but it's not for me to say how it will happen, but I think uh, everyone who knows how to deal with these situations is very cognizant of the problem it takes to go over it, get over it. and. Um, I think the RIMBY will become more convertible, but when it will come, that is a matter for obviously the powers that be. It is not necessarily in our interest uh, to have the dollar as the sole uh, uh, world currency, uh, because the, as the world economy grows, it needs additional currency. And if the dollar is that additional currency, it means that the U.S. has to have a chronic uh, uh, current account deficit. And that is not appropriate. So I think it's, it's, it's in our interest as well uh, to, uh, to reform the system. I think this is a, a, a healthy, if painful, adjustment that the world has to go through. If America doesn't actively take part in this sort of renegotiation of global finance, what will happen? What's your nightmare scenario? Well, uh, uh, the, uh, the Chinese will go bilateral. They already do it. The report you really need to be looking at was the report that was released at the beginning of the year by the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It's made up of two and a half thousand scientists from around the world, all in the field of climatic studies. These are the, the brains, basically. These are the guys who have been looking at this stuff for a very long time. Um, you know, they come together, they put this report together, and there was a unanimous decision made and, and, and put across in this report. And this now, 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 report. now, Mr. Rothschild, a whole bunch of people, hundreds of them have gone public saying that they were included and asked their opinion in research, but that but that many of them never said that they agreed with man-made global warming or uh, its causative effects. Um, I, I think that, I think that if you read the report, they actually do. They come out and they say... No, they say their names were added falsely to that report. Are you aware of that global controversy? It's been in hundreds of newspapers. I think, I think the fact of the matter is that this type of, this type of argument about whether global warming exists or not is just, is, 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 is a waste of time. I mean, the fact of the matter is we've got one planet. We're not doing, you know, all our systems are in degradation. David, what do you think about the markets right now, especially as we have Moody's cutting European banks, uh, subordinated debt, uh, but I guess the biggest fear is about more, I guess, sovereign credit ratings downgrades themselves. Yeah, I think the pain is on, the stress is on, mm -hmm. you've got financial markets sending warnings uh, to the global world, you've got on the other end a population in Europe which is probably still not feeling the pain enough, and you've got politicians stuck in the middle. Yeah, well, so, yeah, politicians like uh, you know German Chancellor Angela Merkel, uh, when she's talking about, I guess, treaty changes as opposed to putting more cash into bailout funds, is that more encouraging to you or discouraging in your view? I think this is very encouraging yeah? because for the past 16 years, 60 years, you know, the Union, European Union, has all been about 
avoiding another war, this objective is completed. Now we need to think about the next 50 years. And to do the next 50 years, you need a real union.